In this lesson, we'll look at the benefits and usage of serverless technologies. Now, we have already talked about this. When we looked at the core compute offerings, we talked about Azure Functions and Azure Logic Apps, but it's called out as a specific skill that's gonna be assessed. So let's dive into a little bit more detail. So we already talked about the idea that when I think about serverless, I don't care about any underlying infrastructure. The core point of all of this serverless is it is consumption based. I'm going to get build based on the actual work that is done. And if I think about these solutions, because it only runs when there's some work that has to be done, well, they are event driven. Something has to happen to fire off this serverless piece of technology. Now, once again, when I think about what that could be, this could be, hey, I have some storage account and something gets written to it. It could be, I have a queue and a new message gets put on that queue. It could be something like, hey, a scheduled event. It could be, I have an endpoint. So there's some endpoint and someone is making a kind of restful call against that. But something is happening that's gonna trigger these things off. Now at that point, there are really those two different solutions when I think about those serverless offerings. I can think we have Azure Functions. Now the key point about an Azure Function, it's running some code. So I am actually writing code in one of the supported languages. Now, if we jump over for a second and actually go ahead and look, we can go back to our function apps, remember, if I create a new function app, remember we have this idea of all these different types of runtime stacks. So .NET, Node.js, Python, Java, PowerShell Core, or even a custom handler can be used. So if I have, for example, some existing piece of code and all I care about is my code and I want to do something when an event happens, this is a great option. So the whole point here is the focus is, is I have my code and I want to run that piece of code. Now, typically when we think about Azure Functions, it's stateless. And what I mean by that is, if I have multiple calls, multiple events, there's no shared kind of state in memory between those. Each time it's called, there's some thing spun up to run my code, and then it goes away. Now there is something called durable functions. And durable functions enable me to have some durable state, i.e. it's maintained, between events happening. Now that's used in a number of different scenarios. Maybe I wanna fan out and call a bunch of different things and then once they all finish, get the outputs and come back in. Maybe it's some asynchronous interaction that is long running. Maybe I'm polling for something. Maybe there's some human interaction. There's different scenarios, but it is possible to create a durable function, but for the most part, by default, they are not. They are stateless, it does something, it goes away, but I am writing the code for that. The alternative is Azure Logic Apps. Here we think about no or low code. We have this authoring experience. And as the name suggests, it's all about taking this, that event, but it has a whole number of connectors. So there's a series of connectors that integrate with some other service to perform some action against that particular service. This is all about the idea of a citizen developer, people who are not developers, but they wanna produce some action. If we look at Power Automate, Power Automate is actually built on Logic Apps. So it's all about automating tasks based on that trigger. This is probably easiest to see. So if once again, we jump over, but this time, let's look at our Logic App. 
Once again, we saw I, I have a couple of logic apps, but we have this whole idea of the logic app designer. And here we see these graphical things that are doing different parts. In this time, my trigger was, hey, a blob is added or modified. I then create a shared access signature, which is something we can generate on a storage account that gives me granular access to maybe only a certain aspect with only certain permissions. And then I'm calling some HTTP endpoint, probably telling it the location and giving it that SAS, so that service I'm calling can do something with it, and then I delete the blob afterwards. There's a huge number of connectors available. So it's about what are connectors, it goes through what they are. There are all these managed connectors, Azure Service Bus, SQL Server, Outlook, SFTP, SharePoint Online, Queues, FTP, Event Hubs, Salesforce. I can integrate with on-premises systems. I can integrate with other types of systems, other types of automations, a massive number of connectors out there. And there are also a huge number of templates. So I have some scenario where it might be there's already that sequence of different connectors based on some trigger that I could just leverage. But I'm not writing a whole bunch of code here. The whole key here is there's some well-known API that there's an existing connector for, and I just want to be able to go and use it. So here, that's really the big focus on how I think about this. Hey, I'd probably use a logic app if, hey, I'm not a developer, I don't have some code I want to run, and there are well-established connectors to that system, hey, I can do this nice graphical authoring to light that up.